Many companies develop foreign activities to spread their businesses beyond the borders and grow. There's about 150 different currencies in the world. Well, and on top of that, foreign exchange rates constantly change and move up and down. So how to report all these foreign activities correctly in the financial statements? What rate to select? Let's find out in this video with the summary of IS21 the effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. This is Sylvia of IFRS Box, and if you'd like to learn IFRS fast, stress-free and like a pro, then you're welcome to check my web ifrsbox.com together with my courses and IFRS quizzes and many more. In today's world, the entities carry out their foreign activities in two basic ways. They either have some transactions in foreign currencies, for example, they might buy goods from international suppliers and pay in foreign currency, or they can equally have a foreign operation, which can be a subsidiary, associate joint venture, or even a branch operating abroad. On top of that, any entity can decide to present its financial statements in some foreign currency other than their own, so the presentation currency can be different. Well, that's why there is a standard IS-21. Its objective is to prescribe how to include foreign currency transactions and foreign operations in the financial statements. Well, this has something to do with a functional currency. And how to translate the financial statements into the presentation currency. Let's explain the difference between the entities functional and presentation currency first. A functional currency is a currency in the primary economic environment in which the entity operates, so normally the one in which the entity primarily generates and expands cash. Entity needs to determine it according to its own activities, environment and operations, so it's not voluntary choice. In general, the functional currency is the same as the currency in the country where the company is located, but this is not always the case. It is basically the currency that influences sales prices, prices of goods or services, companies' labor costs, etc. And it also really depends on the transactions of the specific entity. Sometimes it's not really clear what the functional currency is, and in this case, the management must use its judgment to determine it. On the other hand, the presentation currency is a currency in which the financial statements are presented. An entity can select its presentation currency and it can be whatever you like, basically. So imagine there is a Mexican entity and this entity operates in Mexico. Majority of its expenses are in Mexican peso. So its functional currency will be Mexican peso in most cases. Let's say that this Mexican company sells goods to German customer and as a result, it has receivable in Euro, which is a currency in Germany. And then the Mexican company needs to translate the amount of this receivable to its functional currency or Mexican peso. Now, let's say that this Mexican entity is a subsidiary of American parent company and therefore Mexican company needs to provide financial reports to its parent. So Mexican needs to translate their own financial statements in pesos to the presentation currency, which is US dollar in this case. Of course, Mexican company can present its financial statements in a different presentation currency too when needed. So how shall we report foreign currency transactions in the functional currency? Initially, it means when the transaction occurs for the first time, like the payment or sale, all transactions are translated using the spot exchange rate between the functional currency and the foreign currency. The spot rate is the rate for immediate settlement, so the one that applies for actual transactions. Subsequently, at the end of each reporting period, we shall translate these transactions according to their nature. All monetary items like cash or bank account in a foreign currency, receivable or payable, are translated using the closing rate at the reporting date. All non-monetary items carried at historical cost are reported using the exchange rate at the date of the transaction, that is historical rate. For example, property plan and equipment or intangible assets. All non-monetary assets measured at fair value in a foreign currency, like your investments carried at fair value, are reported at the exchange rate valid when the fair value was measured. Now, how shall we present the exchange rate differences, gains or losses? Well, in general, in profit or loss, but there are some exceptions. 
When you have some non-monetary item with revaluation changes presented in other comprehensive income, well, the foreign exchange component of this change goes to other comprehensive income too. Also, net investment in a foreign operations, that's basically entities interest in the net assets in a foreign operation that can be a subsidiary, associate, joint venture or a branch. Well, here, the differences are presented in profit or loss in the separate or individual financial statements and in other comprehensive income in the consolidated financial statements. And these are reclassified from equity to profit or loss when this net investment is disposed of, sold or something else. Now, how to translate the financial statements of foreign operation to the presentation currency? Remember, that's the Mexican subsidiary reporting to the American parent. Here, the very important fact is whether the foreign operation's functional currency is in a hyperinflationary economy or not. So let's deal with the most common case where it's not in a hyperinflationary economy. Again, it depends on what items we're translating. All assets and liabilities, including goodwill and fair value adjustments, are translated using closing rate at the date of the financial statements. Income and expenses are translated by the transaction or historical rate, but it can be impractical to translate each single transaction separately, so the average period rates can be used. In relation to equity items like share capital, share premium and other items, IS21 is silent and the rates to use are just not specified here. The most appropriate seems using the historical rates, but I've seen the usage of closing rates too. Anyway, it does not have any impact on the overall equity. Why? Because all resulting exchange rate differences shall be presented in equity as a separate component called CTD or currency translation difference or in some other way as appropriate. Now, when there is a currency of hyperinflationary economy involved, the entity should firstly restate its financial statements in line with IS-29 financial reporting in hyperinflationary economies and only then apply the same procedures as we have just described. So that was a short summary of IS-21. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to take your IFRS knowledge a little deeper, then learn IFRS with me and sign up for email updates at ifrsbox.com. Thanks again and have a nice day.